Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to NGC Church today. This afternoon, our topic is Frontline Church, what is your role? And we're so grateful that you have joined us in this service this afternoon. We're just going to open up in prayer. Heavenly Father God, we worship your name, God. We will glorify your name because you are mighty. Thank you for this opportunity to worship in your house this afternoon, God. Thank you, Lord God, that you have never failed us, Lord. Whenever we have asked for your help, you have always been there. Lord God, you have heard our prayers, you have heard our cries. Lord God, you know what we need, Lord God. And we pray, Lord God, for the service to run smoothly today, God. Bless your service today, God. We pray, Lord God, for the speaker today, Lord God. We pray that she will be blessed. Lord God, that the words that she will say today, Lord God, that it will change our hearts, God. And we give you all the praise and all the honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen. This time we're going to ask our praise and worship to lead us into worship. Amen. Our God is awesome. He's an awesome God. Let's sing it out to 
tell him how good he is. Good, good father. Yeah.
just crazy, but today's topic is um, what is your role? And as some of you may know, um, I'm a creative, I like music, I like music technology, I love stuff like that. And in church, I have a few different roles, like praise and worship at the back, I'm trying to start off on the tech live thing, whatever it's called, I don't even know. And there's so many roles in this church. And the one thing that like, I think I've been struggling with a lot, if I have to be honest, is work. At the minute, some of you may not be in work due to the pandemic. It may be you're working extra just to get an extra bit of money because you've not had the hours or whatever it is. I'm in a job at the minute making COVID tests. I feel like I'm surrounded by COVID and I honestly, it's driving me insane. And there's only one thing that is genuine, actually two things that is genuinely keeping me sane in this pandemic, in all these lockdowns, in the time away we've had from reality, what was before that, is hoping that after all this is done, I can get back to normal. I can get back to doing the things that I love creatively because at the minute, I'm struggling to, to go into a job that I don't like, that it's just, it doesn't benefit me, it's not bringing me anything but money and yes money buys you things, money gives you whatever but it doesn't give you pure peace and a lot of that peace that I know I need to find is in God, is in Jesus and I haven't been the best Christian and I just don't know if I ever have. I never will because I'm not perfect, but I will try and I know that there's always hope in Jesus and I, sometimes I may not call out to him, I may not pray, I may not do whatever, but there's one scripture that really like stood by me and I think I find it quite difficult to talk, I get quite anxious when I talk about things to anyone, even if it's a counsellor, I've tried that and even sometimes it's hard to just tell people how I feel. And this scripture, um, Romans 8, uh, verse 26, is likewise the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And that just touches me because it's like, a lot of the time I, I actually don't know what to say. I don't know if I'm meant to go to pastor, if I'm meant to go to someone from church, if I'm meant to go to my mentor, if I'm meant to go to my friend, it, it doesn't matter, whoever it is, I still feel just anxious when I talk about things that's going on in my life because I don't, I don't know how to deal with it and I don't know if you know how I should deal with it and that just gets on top of me, I get overwhelmed. But there's one thing so sweet about God is we don't have to talk to him sometimes and it would be great, it would be great if I could open my mouth and just confess whatever's going on. But sometimes I physically can't, like my heart does not open up and I struggle with it, I really do. And I, I actually pray that one day I can open up so honestly to God about whatever it is going on. But when I feel like I can't open up and talk to God about what's going on in my life or talk to anyone else about what's going on in my life, I know that he can read my heart, he hears my cries, whenever I don't know what to say, he knows how I'm feeling and he's just an awesome God. So if you feel the same that I do, I'm lost in, at this time, I honestly, I feel like I just don't know what's going on with my life and I hate that I'm saying this because it's like I'm going to get emotional but it's true, like I'm not perfect. I'm literally living testimony that stuff goes wrong in Christians' lives, like, and when I don't know where to go, when I don't know how to be honest, when I turn to other things that I shouldn't necessarily be doing, I know that God can hear my cry, and I know that he'll fill me with the strength so that I can later on communicate with him effectively, so that I don't have to keep being stuck in this cycle of just oppressing myself and not talking about things that I know I need to talk about. So I just hope you find a scripture or someone who you're able to connect with and just talk about them things. And if you can't call out to God because you just feel afraid to just talk about them things, just sit and meditate in his presence. Like even if it's music, I enjoy that. Just listening to music and just feeling his presence is great. And 
yeah, that's from me. So keep praying for each other and just stay blessed because it will be fine, honestly. <laughs> it will be fine. <laughs> Thanks. God bless you, Sister Erin. What you said was, with Jesus there is always hope, and that is such a beautiful quote, because there's always hope with Jesus, and he knows our struggles, he knows our pain, without us even saying it, and that's why Jesus is so amazing. At this time, we're going to have the flag ministry, who are going to flag to us in a beautiful song.
wow, that was so beautiful. Thank you, flag team. We're now going to welcome our wonderful, beautiful sister Naya, who's going to deliver us the word today. Usually when we see someone with a gift, we think that, we're, that they're good at it. 
because they've spent years practicing and perfecting their gift. Years in training like astronauts and writers, musicians, singers, actors. We can look at the church and see that prophets, pastors, teachers, preachers, evangelists, many of us have spent years perfecting these skills that we possess. But before they were perfected, and before we even knew that we had these gifts, the scripture is saying that Christ has given them. Isn't that beautiful? And when we talk about gifts, we're not just talking about evangelists and prophets and pastors. We're speaking about all gifts. We're speaking about people that have gifts in music, people that have gifts in encouragement, people that have gifts in hospitality, law, childcare, catering. Whatever the gift is that you have, that is the gift that Christ has given you. And some of us don't yet know what our specific gifts are. But if there's nothing else that you take away from this message today, take away this that Christ himself, our Lord and Saviour, has granted you and all of us with a specific gift. And he has granted us the grace that we need to walk in this gift. And so when you see somebody walking in their gift, we understand now that these gifts aren't earned and they're not things that were accomplished by works, but gifts that have been given to us by Christ our Saviour. And we can cross-reference this with 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 to 11, which says, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. Different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one that is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. Amen? Even if at this time in your life you are unsaved and you haven't yet accepted Christ as your Lord and Saviour, you haven't yet been filled with the Spirit, you are gifted and there is a gift that God has called you to walk in. I have seen many people in the world with gifts in hospitality, speaking, music, but what's sad to know is that though they're successful and they've accomplished many great things that they're missing out on truly fulfilling their purpose, you can live a good life using your gifts outside of Christ, but you're missing out on the excellence that we have access to in Christ. Somebody mentioned once that the next generation of Christians are dependent on us. And I feel like for me personally, that, that woke me up. For some of us, maybe we've found our purpose, but we feel like we're not really accomplishing anything or doing anything for anybody. But those are lies sent by Satan to discourage you. Yes, the gifts that Christ has given us are great, but we have to start somewhere. You've got to begin somewhere. Something that I always say to Christians when we talk about all these types of things is that you can't start at the finish line. You might see somebody that's perfected in their gifts, they're walking in purpose, they're walking in their ministry, they're prophesying, they're, they're, they're raising the dead, they're healing the sick, but they didn't begin there. That's not where they started. They started here on the front line in the church. They didn't start at the end, they started at the beginning. And so that's an encouragement for somebody is to just start, to just begin. There's something that Christ has placed on the inside of you, something that will specifically set somebody free. Something that will impact those that are coming up behind you. And just by being you and walking in your purpose, you can achieve that for somebody. You can bless somebody. You can help somebody. You can support somebody. You can hold somebody up. We are here to represent the kingdom of God here on this earth. And the best way for us to do that is by walking and living in the positions that Christ assigned when he gave the gifts. That we won't be people stumbling around purposeless. We will be in position, ready for all that God has for us. First Peter 4, 10 to 11 says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides, so that in all things, God may be praised through Christ Jesus. To him be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Another thing that amazed me when I read Ephesians 4 is that not only does it tell us who gave the gifts, but it tells us what the gifts are for. 
Ephesians 4 says that the gifts are to equip us, to build us up and to then mature us. And that is our goal as believers, to become mature in the faith. What does it mean to have mature faith? 1 Corinthians 14, 20 says, Brothers and sisters, stop thinking like children. In regard to evil, be infants, but in your thinking, be adults. Once we mature, once we mature, sorry, we will no longer be infants tossed and blown by every wind of doctrine, as it said in Ephesians 4. But instead, we will be assured and confident in what it is that we believe. Don't allow the phrase like infants to be confused with what it is to have childlike faith. Infants have immature faith, but childlike faith is a faith of maturity. The ability to depend on God like a newborn depends on their parents. Full and complete assurance in those that have promised to care for them. And so from this we can understand that the scripture is talking about childlike faith in a way that that is what will mature us. That is how we become the mature body of Christ to depend on God as a newborn depends on their parents. And I'd just like to share a testimony that is relevant to this topic. I used to think when I was um, a young Christian and even before I became a Christian that I didn't have any talents, that I didn't have any skills. I thought that I didn't have anything to offer the world or my family or friends or that I didn't have anything that I could give. And there was a time when I always used to say no when people used to ask me to do things in church. Naya, we would love for you to do this. Naya, we think that you would be really good at this. And I would always say no because of insecurity and because of fear, because of low self-esteem. I used to hate the sound of my own voice and so the thought of recording something and then send it, sending it to somebody just really wasn't for me. So I used to always say no because of that reason. The thought of everybody looking at me, comparison, this was a battle that I faced in my mind. But eventually I realised that these were all lies sent by Satan to discourage me. And how do I know that? Because the scriptures don't support this. When I thought that there was nothing for me to give, God said that I have purpose. And I love that because when I was young, I used to do this thing where I'd sit there. And because my name Naya means purpose, I'd sit there and I'd think, and a young seven, eight year old doesn't even understand or fully grasp the meaning of purpose. But I'm blessed to know that here in church I've found my purpose, I've found my calling, I've found what I'm supposed to do. And that is a blessing in itself. God broke the insecurities that I once had of low self esteem. And it didn't happen overnight, but one day I found freedom. And I prayed about my purpose for many, many years before I got here to this place where I am now talking to you. I prayed about my purpose and then I started seeing visions of me here preaching. But I ignored them because I thought that they were my imagination. And God always confirms his word and he confirmed his word by blessing me with opportunities to speak. And then I found myself in position because I then had the confidence to say yes instead of her when people ask me to speak and that's the journey that led me here today and i've been doing you a disservice if i didn't explain to you how you can also find your purpose but before we get there i just want to read from psalm 139 verse 16. this is one of my favorite scriptures your eyes saw my unformed body all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be I'm going to read it again because it sounds so sweet. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Church, your life has meaning. Before you even had lived one day, God had already written all of your days in his book of life. You are not an accident. You are not here by chance. Your life is not here by coincidence. You have been chosen. You have been called. And there are prophecies that you specifically have been sent to fulfill. Purpose is not just a one day event. So just today purpose will happen. Or on this day I'm gonna start walking in my purpose. My purpose is gonna begin when I get to that stage in my life, when I get to that position. 
that I desire to be, but purpose is a lifestyle, purpose is a way of life. Every day that we live as Christians, we should be walking in purpose. Even when we feel purposeless, like our lives don't have meaning, like we're in jobs that we feel stuck in, we feel trapped, there is purpose at work, even in the midst of that. Because the Bible says that all things are working for our good, that all things are working according to the good of those that love God, but we have been called according to his purpose. Before Jesus got to the cross, he was walking in purpose. He didn't walk around prior to get into Calvary and say things like, there's something that God wants me to do, but I'm just waiting for the right time. I'm just waiting to get there. From even before he was in the womb, Christ Jesus, there was a purpose attached to his life. The wise men came and they went and told of this small baby that they had seen. And what separated Jesus from all the babies that they had seen before was the purpose that was attached to his life. Every day he lived, he lived in purpose. He healed the sick, he raised the dead, he delivered people, fulfilling what had been prophesied, fulfilling what had been written. Are you fulfilling, church, what Christ has written for your life? Are you walking in the promises? Are you walking in what he had prophesied? Are you walking in the things that he spoke over you when he saw your unformed body? Because if you are not, today is the day that you can begin to take those steps. You can begin to move forward into your purpose. And instead of feeling trapped, you can find freedom. You can find courage. You can find boldness. There is something that you can do to help somebody. Something that you can do to change somebody's life. Something that you can do to heal somebody, to support somebody, you can hold somebody up, you might be like me, you might be insecure, you might be afraid of listening to the sound of your own voice, you might be afraid of people looking at you, what will they say, what will they think of me, but God is saying that he loves you, God is saying that you are his treasured possession, God is saying that he has plans for your life and that this world that he formed is not just a coincidence, we're not just here by chance, but there are things for you to do, things for you to accomplish, things for you to to change mountains for you to move with God, through God, because in Him all things are possible. There is a hope that we have in the Savior of the world, our God that brings change, our God that transforms, our God that never changes, but is changing us, is moving mountains, is healing, has resurrected me from the pit that I was in before, before I got to this point, before I got to this place in you. You can be changed, you can be transformed in your purpose, your purpose is waiting for you, waiting for you to say yes, sir. open your mouth and praise the Lord, give him the glory, give him your worship, there is something on the inside of you, and it's sad to see people, it's so sad to see people walking around living their life, just going, going wherever the wind takes them, just going wherever they feel like, doing what makes them happy, what makes you happy cannot save people's lives, what makes you happy cannot change somebody, there is a specific purpose, there is a specific plan, there are things that are written, things that were written before the foundations of the world, and my prayer is for you, you church, to move and to walk, walk in these things in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, hallelujah, in this life you have the opportunity to do many, many things. As you do them, as you live your life, as you enjoy it, please don't miss out on purpose. Let's live our lives in such a way that when we get to heaven and we see God's face, that we will know that everything that he had written, everything that he had spoken over our unborn bodies, that these things have been accomplished and that these things have come to pass. And so to find your purpose, I said that I would share with you how you can walk and begin to move in your purpose. You should always begin by prayer. Praying for God to reveal your purpose. And this is something that I did not for a day, not for a week, not for years. Not for a year, sorry, but for many, many years of my life I spent praying about my purpose. Reading the scriptures is also a good place to start. I love the story of Joseph because it's just it's just so perfect and so beautiful the way that Joseph found his purpose. He began by having dreams and then the dreams came to pass. And I think that that is a good, a good place to start for somebody that's looking for their purpose. You can also talk to other people about how they found their purpose. You'll be surprised how many times God will speak to you through other people. And my other encouragement to you today, church, is to be free from comparison. But you are the only you. You are the only one with your gifts. You're the only one with your talent. And God is setting you here on this earth 
for a purpose. Enjoy your life and make the most of every opportunity. But keep your eyes on God that his plans, his will for your life can be fulfilled. And these are the short few words of mine. I pray that you've been so blessed by this word. And I just want to say thank you to everybody that's taken part in the service today. I've been blessed and I pray that you've been blessed too. I'm just going to close in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, we look to you, our Saviour, the maker of heaven and earth. We look to you, our Father. We look to you, our Lord. We look to you, our God, and we can smile. We can have joy in the presence of the Lord because though, though we might be living in a pandemic, though some of us might feel trapped and alone, people might be suffering from insecurities and battling a heartache and pain and sorrow, we can smile in the presence of God because there is a hope, a hope for the greater things that are to come. We can rejoice, we can rejoice here in the presence of God because we know that whatever we face out in the world is nothing compared to the glory that shall surely be revealed in us. And so God, as we pray today about purpose, I'm praying over those that are lost, oh God, that you can draw them to purpose, draw them into your arms, draw them into your presence, that those that are unsaved, that they may find salvation. Those, oh God, in heaven that have used the skills and the talents that you have given them for the world. I'm praying that you can forgive them and bring them back into your arms. I'm praying for those that are in purpose, that you will keep them there. I'm praying over the church, over the body of Christ, that you would anoint us in these times of difficulty. Oh God, that you would give us even more grace, more strength, precious God, more anointing. I'm praying today for the overflow. I'm praying, God, for you to pour out your spirit. I'm praying, God, for you to bless the frontline church. We might be in the midst of battle. We might be in the midst of spiritual warfare. But, oh, God, we are looking to you and we are praying. Praying that you will help us to remember that we wrestle, Jesus. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We have power through the Holy Spirit. And so I'm praying, oh, God, in heaven that we would call on you. Holy Spirit, that you will fill us up and give us the strength. The strength to face these battles, the strength to fight them and to fight them well, oh God in heaven, because you said that you will fight for it if we would only be still. I pray your peace upon every mind today, every mind that is wrestling and struggling, oh God in heaven, with all kinds of difficulties, all kinds of thoughts that the enemy has said. We silence them right now today in the name of Jesus. Get behind me, Satan. I'm pleading the blood of Jesus over your children in sickness. I'm praying. God over those that are in grief, oh Lord, that you will send them comfort. Those that are worrying and doubting, oh God, that you will bring forth peace. Calm their minds today in the name of Jesus. Anoint, anoint your children. Oh God, I pray with the ministries that aren't able to operate in this time. Oh God, that you will keep them with the vision. Keep them, oh God, in your plan and help them reassure them that the times that we are in today, they will not last forever. One day it will come to an end and we have a hope, an eternal hope in Christ and everything that you have promised, oh God. We are praying for these things to be fulfilled. Oh, bless the leaders of the church. Oh, cover those that have invested their time. Bless each and every person that is watching this service and is here in the house today, oh God. Whatever their struggle might be, I pray that you bless them with joy. I pray, God, that you send them the overflow. I pray that you will renew and renew their strength. My God, in heaven, we are looking to you and I praise you. I give you the glory and we thank you. We thank you that though the congregation cannot be here, we thank you that we can have church. I pray that you will meet people where they are in their homes. I pray that you will send the overflow, the anointing, that people be delivered in their household. Somebody shall be built today. Somebody shall be changed today. Somebody be transformed today. They might not be in the house of the Lord physically, but in their spirit. My God, I'm praying for you to send the rain. I'm praying, oh God, that where there is a lack, oh God, that you will fulfill the every need of your people. Oh, send the anointed. Oh God, send the peace of God. Send your spirit. Jesus, we look to you and we give you thanks, oh God. You alone, you alone are worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What an awesome God. We praise your name. We praise you. We praise
We thank God for you, Sister Naya, and we pray that God will just allow that seed just to blossom and just to grow, and I'm excited to see that. If there's something that you can take away this afternoon from what Sister Naya said is, what is your gift? What is your purpose? And what has Christ put in you? Have a little think about that. So now it's offering time, Saints. It's offering time. One of my favorite songs is, give and it will come back to you. Press down, shaking together and running over. So give today. If you look on the screen, there's a church in many ways how to give and how to sow your seed in the ministry. God bless you. As I pray the worship, we're going to worship. Okay, I'm saving my
welcome to NGC TV and this is your announcements for the week. On Monday we had the lounge which is live on Instagram from 7.30. Wednesday we had Bible study which is live on Periscope at 6.30. Feel free to come and join us. On Thursday, Look Inside are doing parenting classes every Thursday afternoon and Thursday evening. If you would like to register, please email info at lookinside.org.uk. Also, Harvester Food Bank is still available. If you are in need or you know somebody in need, please make a referral and we can get food out to you. Hi guys, I just want to talk to you really quickly about Hope Christmas Hampers. The idea behind the initiative is to provide the ideal Christmas meal for those who may be experiencing hardship. And all of the information around the idea and how to make a referral can be found on the NGC website, so please do take a look at this. However, this will not be possible without the help and support and generosity of you guys. So my plea at this moment in time, due to the festive season fast approaching, is for volunteers. Anybody that can help with shopping prior to putting the hampers together, with physically putting the hampers together and delivering them around the festive season. And for any donations, so whether people want to put items on their shopping list and purchase them as they would the Harvester Food Bank service and donate them this way, or whether people are able to offer financial support, which will enable the volunteers who do go shopping to continue to collect items that are needed for the hampers. Any support, no matter how great or small, is truly needed and truly appreciated. We're reminded that Jesus is the reason for the season and any gift that we can share and we can share in love will be greatly, greatly received. If you're able to offer any support whatsoever, then please contact First Lady Julie Samuel. Sunday services will now be live on YouTube every Sunday at 12 p.m. Please subscribe to our channel so you can get latest and up-to-date videos. Thank you and God bless you. Better is one day than